uh, needing uh, to be reminded of who we are and who you are so we might walk in this world in a way that is consistent with uh, a good shepherd that looks out for his sheep. So thank you, Father. Thank you for those that have come. We uh, ask you to be with those that are sick today, those that are infirm, those that are lost apart from you, um, perhaps knowing you one day, but have grown far from you. So we ask you to come and meet with us today. We are your people. Uh, we are the sheep of your pasture. And so, Father, we are here. So speak to us. Uh, some of us come here this week with um, having really good weeks, and some come here with really bad weeks. Uh, some have had wonderful things happen, and others have had catastrophes. So, Father, um, wherever we are, uh, you know what to do and what we need. And so we ask for your help, your mercy, your shepherding work this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Okay, in, in honor of Kern County Fair, I think this is the last day of the fair. Um, today, as you heard the text that Billy read so beautifully for us, we are going to talk about sheep. Uh, and sheep are in the news, I noticed, and this very week. So I want to show you a little sheep activity out there. Can we, that thing going to blow up for us? Okay. YouTube is semi untrue. Here we go. A little volume. Oh my God. Okay. This happened just this week in Europe. Um, one of the lead sheep, actually there are no lead sheep, but the sheep saw his reflection in the window of the sporting goods store and decided to go in. So they're all following their reflections into the sporting goods store. I can't tell you what that guy's saying in German, but... I have a brother that speaks German. I know what that word is. Anyway, so I gathered a crowd, and uh, they filled up the entire store. And then, so there was a couple shepherds, I think, on the street at this time. And so we can advance to the other. Does this show it? Okay, and here is part two of the same. And, uh, okay, uh, we back to part one. Okay, here we go. All right, stop right there. I'll, I'll explain it, Lucy. All right. So one of the shepherds, there was a couple shepherds standing on the street. He went and picked up one of the sheep that was inside the sporting goods store, and he stood at the doorway and showed it to the other sheep. And so the other sheep saw the sheep in the doorway, and he just backed up down, the, and they all went down the street. Sheep in the news. So, um, okay. Um, this is not going to be complimentary. For all of us. But remember, I am lead sheep, lead uh, confused one, okay? Uh, the Bible says we are sheep 400 times. It is the most oft, speaking of King James, the most oft used illustration of the human race. I'm talking about everybody. I'm not just talking about us. I'm talking about everybody, the whole human race. 100 times in the Bible, it appears that God is the shepherd. So, uh, when you have something that is said that much, it's, it's good to check that out every once in a while. So, uh, we are in Ezekiel, and I think Ezekiel is the prophet for our day. Ezekiel is about 586 to 593. He's a pastor of the Israelites, and he's been deported to Babylon. So, he is... Seeking to pastor and speak into those people that are in exile and having great troubles. And Ezekiel, I think, is actually the best news we have these days. Ezekiel is, has an awesome message for us. Um, if you heard the passage, uh, it, it really is an indictment upon all leaders and rulers. It really is. Uh, in Israel, the government, everything was together. It wasn't separated. Government, religion. But we're going to look at three problems today. Well, we're going to look at three points, not three problems. The first problem is that we are sheep. Numero uno. Uh, the second one is the weakness of the solution. Uh, the weakness of solution of our sheepiness is human leaders. Human leaders, human shepherds. The third point, the answer is the ultimate shepherd. There's an ultimate shepherd. Okay. So here we go. The first point, the problem is we are sheep. Uh, and it doesn't mean that's all we are. 
but it does mean it's a big part of our makeup. Okay? All right. When I say sheep, <laughs> you think of Bobby's Hallmark and those cute little fuzzy ones that you get and put on your shelf. <laughs> right? <laughs> and and I, I mean, sheep are cute. Right? Okay. Uh, no, they're not. Let me just, let me just go over to uh, uh, and talk to some, I tell you, got some quotes from real shepherds. These are guys that do this full-time, work with sheep full-time. Here's what they said, and I quote, didn't make this up, I quote, sheep are the stupidest animals in the world. This is a full-time shepherd. I think he has a, he has a bead on this. Uh, they lose their way constantly. They're not like cats or dogs. They, don't, they cannot find their way home. You have to go and round them up. It's almost always impossible. Sometimes you have to seize them, tie their feet together, throw them up on your shoulder, and take them back home because they cannot find their way home. As far as hygiene goes, sheep next to pigs are perhaps the nastiest animals. They are full of, have you been to Kern County Fair? Go on out. They are full of lice and all kinds of hygiene problems and frequently need to be dipped in very strong um, very strong remedies for all of that stuff. Another problem with sheep is they cannot find their food. Did you know sheep can't find food? They don't smell it and go, they have to be led to food. Uh, and they can't defend themselves against anything. I mean, a kitty cat could kill a sheep. I mean, they just can't do nothing. And so they have the inability to defend themselves um, against any predator and all predators. Um, sheep wander a lot to remote locations and they don't know what they're doing. I read a story of a couple that was over in Scotland and you know how you have the green hills of Scotland and, and, and this couple was driving and they were saying, honey, this is just so picturesque. I'm so glad we did the European thing, you know, da 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 They said, oh, look at those sheep on the side of that mountain over there. Let's drive over there and see those. And they get over there and what it was actually was that there was a cliff up there and there was all these dead sheep on the ground. So there's just piles of white fur. They had walked off a cliff right above that. And so there was a big herd of sheep just dead. So sheep stand in unsafe places. They eat unsafe things. They don't know the difference between a grass and something that will poison them. They will just eat it. If it's green and it's on the ground, it's ate. And so uh, they just eat anything. Um, and so unsafe places, uh, they, um, sheep never, <laughs> Here's a good way to say it. Sheep don't plan ahead. They don't. They never see the big picture of things. They're always just right in the moment. Is there a nub of grass to eat? They're always in the moment. They cannot see the big picture. That's sheep. Um, sounds like me. Uh, and uh, they eat it. And if you put them in a field, they will eat the grass all the way down to the mud. And they will stay in that same spot until it's just mud and nothing to eat. Uh, so, what is God saying when, I mean, I think God knows what sheep are like, probably. What is God saying about us? Now, let me tell you this. If you're having a low self-esteem week, you should leave, because we're not done. I mean, if you're just dipping down in your psychological fitness, just dip out. There's coffee over there. Or no, there's not. Actually, maybe water. I don't know. But I'm just telling you, this is so uncomplimentary. I don't, I don't know what to do with it because it's just, the Bible is just full of it. So I, I don't know what to do with it. But spiritually, we're sheep. We don't, we stand in unsafe places. We eat unsafe things. We cannot find our way to good food. We need to be led all the time. And sometimes we wander so far off. And sometimes we're assaulted by things that we didn't mean to be assaulted by. You know, in the New Testament, <laughs> it, it refers, uh, there's a scripture that says, the devil, whether you believe that or not today is irrelevant to me, but it says the devil is like a lying lion prowling around looking for something to devour. So people are devoured. Um, sin is referred to as a predator, like a cat. When Cain and Abel, do you remember the Cain and Abel story? One of the most famous big sin stories in the Bible when he murdered his very brother 
Uh, what, what, is it, what does it say, the scriptures say to Cain? What does it say to Cain right before he did what he did? The Lord spoke right to Cain. He said, sin is crouching. It's going to leap. It's at your door. You must master it or it will master you. And the truth of us, the truth really is that we've all been mastered by it. That's why in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, chapter 3, Paul's greatest gospel book, he says, all we are like sheep gone astray. Each to his own way. And that's really how sheep are, each to his own way. But sheep will, uh, you know, in, in the sense that we're like sheep in the sense that we can't so tell something true from something false. Some spurious teaching, some weird cult. I mean, people believe just lo anything, anything if it feels good. Uh, we don't know when things are safe or unsafe. And the truth is, too, people don't find their ways to, to God. Someone has to direct them. I, I think we think, and as certainly I've seen a little bit of this, I think we think that people just, they're always drawn to God, but actually it's more like the hymn where it says we're prone to wander. We're actually left turning a lot more than we know. So, now the Bible has more to say about us than just being sheep. I mean, it says there's a father, God's like a father, we're like a prodigal son or daughter. You know, there's different pictures. But the sheep picture really, really sticks and uh, actually is a great help to me, and I hope it's a help to you. I think of the story, um, the story of Odysseus. Do you guys know Greek stuff a little bit? They're recycling that in movies right now. Titans, all that stuff is all Greek stuff. Hercules, you know, all those stories. Well, there's a story of Odysseus, and he's trying to get home to his wife because he's been gone a long time. And they have to drive their ship Never say drive a ship. I was in the Navy. Never say that. You'll be slapped. But anyway, they're motoring their ship. I still couldn't get the Navy thing, and I was in there. They're motoring their ship, and uh, they're going by an island called the Sirens. And basically, there's this choir of chicks on the island, and, you know, they're attractive. And, but what's really attractive is they sing this song. Ooh, I don't know what it is. Who knows? Anyway, this is a... Famous Greek story. So Odysseus is on this ship, and so these sirens are going to start singing. And when they sing their song, their little, the little notes of their song go, and then they go inside guys' brains, and we become full-blown sheep. And what the ship, they head the ship to the island, and they crash on the rocks, and it kills them all. That's the siren's job is to kill people. So great job. Choirs that kill. Anyway, don't think about that very long. But uh, so Odysseus, the captain of the ship, says, here's what I want you to do. We're coming up to the sirens. I want you to tie me to the mast and bolt me totally down. I mean, wrap me up with ropes. And no matter what I say to you, don't do it. Because I'm going to tell you to go to the island, and I am your captain. But don't listen to me. And so he ties himself to the mast because I'm getting ready to go crazy because of what I'm hearing. Do you suppose we do that? And that we need some place to tie ourselves to the mass and say, ignore what I say, I'm going to lose it. I think that's exactly what church is. Matter of fact, being a member of a church is saying, I'm willing to tie myself to the mass and sometimes I'm going to go crazy. Will you guys go ahead and love me and put up with me and be there for me even when I'm losing it? That's really what it is. That's really what it is. So, and especially in our culture, we, we struggle so much with authority because we're Americans, and, and we have a lot of struggle with authority. Um, and, and sometimes when we don't, unwilling to follow, then we sometimes end up sheep courts. Sheep courts. Uh, point number two. So that was point one. The problem is sheep, all the sheepiness that we have. Problem number two is partial it, it's an inadequate answer. It's a weak answer. It's human leaders. Human shepherds. Um, three institutions that are ordained by God. I will tell you this right now. Three institutions. Marriage. God created man and woman. The church or God's people. You could refer to it as Israel. However you want to call it. Church and government. Those are ordained by God to be a help to us. All of them. We get some of our greatest wounds in those arenas, but at the same time, the family, the church, and the government. 
Um, and, and so these are three institutions. And really, they're, sh they're actually shepherding institutions. Have you noticed that? Uh, let me say this. If, if Johnny, I'm raising Johnny, and the parents are saying, Johnny, uh, you know, you, you need to go to class and stop skipping school. And so if he listens to me in the parenting arena, that works, right? I just kind of shepherd. I took the stick and kind of shepherd. And then if Johnny doesn't, and, and then they go, you go to church and pastor so-and-so says obey your parents. And so there's a little more shepherding going. And then if Johnny continues to skip school, then there's another institution that will show up, right? I mean, ultimately, the, the government shows up, right? And they shepherd us some more. I am thankful for the institutions that God created. Imperfect, every one of them, though. Imperfect. Um, and, and, and some of you today probably would say, really what's going on right now is that we're having a crisis of leadership in our government. Would anybody say that? Yes, you would. I'll just fill that in. Okay, so, so what we want is we'd like a new shepherd. So it's, it's time to elect a new shepherd, right? I mean, that's what's going on. Let's get a shepherd. And the truth is, is that goes on and on and on and on. And the truth is, there is always a crisis of leadership. There is no final answer in human leadership. No final answer. Um, in, in verses 1 through 10, the, the leaders of Israel, and I, I, this is government, this is everybody, they're accused primarily of being selfish and not taking care of the sheep. Their motivation is bad. Um, people are sick. They don't get them. They, they, they neglect. And they are brutal. They're too harsh. Some people too harsh. And so we look, who, let me just ask you guys this. Who do you want to follow? Who do you want to be with? People are attracted, as Christians, people are attracted uh, to other people who exude, put out some sort of personhood, humanity that's attractive to us, right? That's really the truth. Uh, and here's, here's two things how I believe, and authorities far better than me believe, that, that what goes on with people that are learning to be shepherds. There is the truth. Uh, shepherds are required to do two things. Love people and tell them the truth. I, I, if, I love, if I love Johnny skipping school, I've got to tell him, Johnny, you've got to go to school. Right? I've got to tell the truth. Parent, can you, can you be a parent and not tell your kids the truth? Nah, -uh. <laughs> It's not going to work. So you've got to tell the truth and you've got to love them. Some people are better at one or the other. Have you noticed that? You are probably better at one or the other. Um, some people can love anybody, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And some of you can't stand anybody, and <laughs> you just don't love anybody. <laughs> no, you probably love somebody. But, but you really are just rating. You've got six shooters on your side like this, and you're just waiting to tell them the truth. Uh, I think of Flintstones. You remember Bam Bam, the little kid? And, and Bam Bam had what? A big old bat. And when Fred got scared, he went and got his kid because his kid had a big bat. And he go, bam. And some people are just like that. They just bam you with the truth. And you go, whoa, whoa, I didn't know, you know. What, what, does, what does the scripture say about Jesus Christ? He is full of grace and truth. Grace and truth embodied in an attractive, beautiful person. And that's us too. How can we not avoid the truth? And how can we still love people? We can't give up one or the other or we're no good for anything. That's right. That's an amen. That's an amen. She said, yeah, you listen. Uh, I, it, people, people are like motorboats. Anybody, we, when we first started the church, we used to go to Buena Vista. I almost said something wrong. Buena Vista, and we said, <laughs> we didn't have a church building, we met at Cal State or somewhere, and anyway, we showed up out of the lake, and we'd ski and baptize people, that was kind of, okay, let's ski, let's baptize them, so anyway, we're out there skiing, and you know, motorboats leave a wake, you guys know a wake, right, behind the motorboat, there's, it's a wave, and it's a wake, and how, how I check people out is I look at their wake, and one side of the wake 
is relationships, people. After you know this person, are you a better person or do you feel like you've been beat to a pulp? I mean, you know, there's, there's relational and then there's task. Do they get the job done? I mean, if you're the boss of something, you want workers that got to get the job done and they don't beat up people in the process. Somehow they, they do both. When people come to our church, I make phone calls if they're in a leadership spot. I check them out and I look at their past. And sometimes I kind of go, well... Ed and I talk about this sometimes. I am, I am a sheep, but I'm also a dog, a sheep dog. And when I see something, I just kind of bark. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful with that. You know, because I, 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 I'm just telling you, I check out folks. I have to. Because I want them to be good shepherds. Because the most important thing is growing people in Christ. And if anything gets in the way with that, and I don't care what it is, and I don't care who we lose. Good shepherding is, so, um, have you guys watched over the last few, uh, last few years all the shepherds that are losing their job in the Middle East, like Egypt and other places like that, right? They're throwing their shepherds out. They're saying, you know, Gaddafi's no good. They're no good. We're always looking for good shepherds. We want them. I mean, I want them. You want them. So what's really the final answer? The final answer is there's an ultimate shepherd. And I want you to look down in that final verse in that passage in Ezekiel 34. When he says, my, my servant David, I, God, will be their shepherd. But my servant David will be their prince. I, God, have spoken. Okay. This book is written in about 593 B.C. David lived around 1,000 B.C. So what is Ezekiel saying? He's saying, David, there's a new and perfect David that's coming. And you know who that is? And, and, he just, and in that passage, in this passage, longest passage in the Bible on shepherding and good leadership, right in that passage, it's, it, God says, I will be their shepherd. And then he says, my servant David. God in human form. Jesus, what is he called in John? The good shepherd. This is a reference to Christ, flat out. Written hundreds of years after David and hundreds of years before Jesus. Right out about 590 years before Christ. There would be a day when God will go down. That's what it says. Um, and so uh, David's long gone. And Jesus is not there yet, but this was looking forward to that good shepherd. The overseer of our souls. I like that. The overseers of our soul. Jesus was, what kind of leader was Jesus? He was a servant leader. He would wash your feet. He would take out the trash. And then he would tell you what to do. We're going this way, guys. He did both. He embodied a very strong leadership and a very servant leadership. I, I like, and, and what was Jesus' ultimate service? Beyond taking the trash out, beyond feeding thousands of people, how did Jesus ultimately serve us? I know he went to the cross. His ultimate service was to lay his life down. That was his ultimate service. And and therefore, in Revelation, you know that wild book that you should... Anyway, in Revelation 7, 17, it, it has a picture of a... It's talking about this throne. You know, it's... Heaven is... Kind of, uh, Revelation is kind of like opening a curtain and looking at heaven for a little while and then putting the curtain back. You want to know what's going on? There it is. Okay, we're done. So don't get too carried away. But it, there's this picture of this throne... And, and this person is looking up, John the Revelator, the writer of Revelation, is looking up in this vision, and he sees this throne, and he looks on the throne, and you know what's on the throne? A lamb. There's a little lamb. And it says, the lamb who was slain. So, um, Jesus was slain. And shepherding can be very dangerous work. Do you know, can I, I man, I... 
This could go on for a while, so I'm going to try and zip it up as fast as I can. Being a shepherd is tough. Some of you have shepherd people. And, and, and if you think it's just going to be easy, it's not. Very difficult. Raise some kids. Very difficult. Good luck. I'll pray for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> some of you have led small groups. Some of you have taught children. Some of you have worked with youth. Some of you, those are all shepherding deals. That's the gig. It's to shepherd those folks. And you're really trying to shepherd them to Jesus, right? I mean, you're trying to keep them with the good shepherd. And, you know, it's, it's a um, challenging thing. And so, because many of us have been shepherding for a long time, uh, sometimes the shepherds, those of us trying, because we're sheep too, we get hurt too. And we say, this is hard work. I'm not doing it anymore. Those sheep bite. Ow! Ah, you know, I mean, and they do. Sheep bite. Have you been around them? There's like, you know, ever stick your finger in front of a cute little rabbit and they give you a nice little crunch? Ow, you'll kick the rabbit. I mean, that's, they're not that cute. So, but the big mistake that we could make as a church and as a people would say, oh, it's hard. I should stop shepherding people. No. Oh, no. Let us learn from every pain and every bite and everything that's ever happened to us, just like it happened to Jesus as he sought to minister to people. They weren't necessarily kind in return. He was refused by many, scorned by many, critiqued by all, and yet he kept shepherding us. And so, as we serve in... Um, and, and, and because people are out there and they're being devoured. Sin devours people. Read Romans 1. It takes them places they never planned on going. It destroys the purposes of God in their life. And the remedies for sin is not another degree. The remedies for sin is not just feeling a little bad. The remedy for sin is always the amazing gospel of Christ. And it's the only thing that will grip and break your heart enough by God's power to turn away from the very stuff that destroys you. Sin is keep doing the very thing that's destroying you and think it's going to be okay. And people are trapped like that. I'm so thankful that someone reached out to me at 19 because I was trapped. I was being devoured by my own life. But I believe God shepherded me to a little church on the east side here in Bakersfield. And that imperfect church loved me and just as this imperfect church has loved a lot of people and need to, needs to continue. So wolves are out there. It's interesting uh, when Jesus, uh, Jesus, what Jesus saw when he was being uh, crucified, so he quoted Psalm 22. And you know what Psalm 22 talks about? The wolves are surrounding me. Sheep are defenseless. And Jesus made himself defenseless. And so, how we shepherd is so critical. And we learn from the good shepherd. And truth is, we're always going to fail and fall short in many ways with many people. That's the truth. Uh, it really is. So, what can we come away with? The first thing we can know is that being a parent, being the church, or even being part of the government institution, whether you're a school teacher or, or the mayor of Bakersfield, it doesn't matter in the sense that those are always imperfect forms of shepherding, but they are to shepherd. We must do it. We must do it. Uh, the, the church says elders, leaders, overseers. It has tons of names for people that are called to call other people to submit to Christ and follow him. Sometimes when shepherds go and get the sheep, the sheep feel like they're being assaulted because they have to catch them, throw them down, tie them up, and the sheep think someone's getting ready to slaughter them. But in fact, the shepherd is saving that sheep. So, we need to not ever let, and, and, and in America, golly, 
we just love to not submit to any authority at all. It's, it's, a, par, it's a pastime in America. The problem, and my, my son, who's a second year student at Fuller Seminary, called me the other day and we we're just conversing because he's, he's a very active Christian person and, and we were talking and he was talking about the inability of Americans to submit to anything really. And the problem with that is you don't ever grow. You don't grow into a fullness of Christ. Until the Lord can get you to stand still, it's not going to go anywhere. I, I will tell you this, in my, whether it's military or ministry positions, I've served every kind of internship there is, I think. Every time I submitted to imperfect leaders over me in the church or in the military, I'm a lieutenant in the Navy, all these settings, every time those times when I just said, Lord, use this in my life, when I gave myself to it, I grew. Every time. Somehow the Lord worked through these imperfect people, imperfect systems, to help me grow. So that leads me to the sec second point. Join the church. Be <laughs> well, The reason you join a church, in one sense, is, is really you want to be like Odysseus. Because you're going to go crazy at times. I don't know anybody here who hasn't. And so we just have to tie you up and leave you there. Give you a little sip of water, let you holler at us, tell us how bad we are, just keep you tied up, and then one day it's over and you're back and helping the rest of us and we're all, and then I get to be tied up, you know? I mean, really, it's that. So don't be afraid to be tied up. The Lord uses that. Jesus tied the disciples to him. And that was not a fun ride sometimes. Okay, the last thing is trust your shepherd Jesus completely. Let me ask you guys a question. Is it, okay, <laughs> is it okay to have one area of my life that Jesus can't touch? Can I just have this little pasture over here to do my thing? No. <laughs> can't I have this particular lifestyle that I embrace and I enjoy? Can't I have this? Here's the deal. With Jesus as your shepherd... You have no privacy. You think you have privacy. I'm not asking to, to be in your privacy. I don't even want to be in your privacy. I know far too much, heard far too little. Yeah. And I know myself. That's enough. Case is built. Case closed. But the Lord gets to see everything, doesn't he? It's like the psalmist when he said, where can I go? For, when David says, where can I go from the Lord? Oh, I go on a mountain. I can go to the bottom of the sea. Oh, he's there. Bummer. You know? So really, and, and, and this is the way to think about this. Jesus is your Savior, right? You've been dunked. We baptized you. But is Jesus your shepherd? When you make a decision, do you say, Lord Jesus, can I make this relational decision? Lord Jesus, can I make this business decision? Lord Jesus, can I make this church decision? If he's not included in the decision making and the direction and the involvements and all that stuff, he's not your shepherd. And let me say this too, Full sub, the only way the Christian life actually works where there is gospel power is submitting ourselves completely as best we can to Christ. It really works that way. It really is where the peace beyond understanding shows up, where love for people that we didn't have the moment before, I mean, that's where it all originates is in our submitting ourselves to the shepherd. And, and so, um, sometimes we look at situations and we want people, here's a good one, we want people to fix us. Now, I do a lot of premarital. I did a wedding last night. I'm doing a wedding again this week. And sometimes people get married because if I marry her, she'll fix me. And then I kind of want to go like that, you know, and bring back the reality. Or, or the, uh, vice versa, either way. And, and, and we look at jobs, we say, if I get this job, our life will smooth, you know, fix, fix. Things fix me, but they don't. Nothing fixes us. It is only giving ourselves to the Lord that we, the fixing that we need really occurs. Um, and so, as we think about the fall and what we're doing in the fall, guys, just, just remember this. If you're like me, 
I was a wandering sheep. And if that woman wouldn't have made the call, I don't know. I'm a dead sheep. Sometimes it's that serious. I mean, sometimes it does have total life ramifications. So when we go to reach out, a phone call or you're shepherding. I mean, I would have everybody connected here, you know. I mean, we got 2,500 names on our rolls. Good gosh, connect everybody. Good luck with that. They're sheep. But you know somebody that'll listen to you that probably won't listen to me. They won't give me the time of day, but they may listen to you. And so I pray this fall that we shepherd along with the good shepherd. And he can empower us and show us who's ready to be shepherded by him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you are the good shepherd, that you have sent your shepherd to us. Lord, we need your help to see the world as you see it and those around us. Uh, forgive us where we fail. We fail as leaders and workers and at the same time you use us and we have seen great things because we have just said, use me, Lord. Uh, shepherd someone through me. Help me to be who you need me to be so I can be a guide to others. And uh, in our struggles, uh, you work through us and we are so thankful. I thank you for each here. I pray a special blessing on their lives. Um, and I pray no matter what they've been through this week, they will look to you as their shepherd in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm.